Hi everyone, welcome to week 10. We are going to um, continue talking about radicals um, and learning about quadratic equations. First of all, the square root property. Now this is a subset of what we have discussed before, namely that for any n, you have this following result. If you take the nth root after taking the nth power, you get the absolute value of a if n is even, and you get a if n is odd, right? What this also means is that if, you, if I have the square root or the nth root function, this means that the domain is all r if n is odd, and it's only the positive numbers if n is even as long as we are working in real numbers. Of course, we learned about imaginary numbers, but in general, unless specified, we work with real numbers, in which case, for example, square roots of negative numbers are not defined over real numbers. And in particular, in this section, we are gonna focus on n equals two. So for example, the solution to x squared equals 16 is plus minus four. And this can be seen using factoring. This is something we've seen before x squared equals 16 means x squared minus 16 is 0, which by the difference of squares becomes x minus 4 times x plus 4 equals 0, which gives me x is 4 or negative 4. In general, if u squared is d, then u equals plus minus d. This is as long as d is greater than or equal to 0. Some examples here. Um, isolate the x squared. So the first step is divide by 3. So you get x squared is 6, which means x is plus or minus root 6. Over here, you add 7 on both sides. You end up with 7, and then you divide by 2. x squared is 7 halves, so x is plus or minus root of 7 over 2. 9x squared is negative 25, and x squared is negative 25 over 9. Now, in this case, let's say that we allow complex numbers. Okay, if it says that complex numbers are allowed, then x becomes square root of negative 25 over 9, which is square root of 25 over 9 times square root of negative 1, that's 5i over 3, but you still need the plus minus. Now, the reason we need this plus minus is because we know i squared is negative 1, but what's negative i squared? Okay, that's negative i times negative i, these negatives cancel, so it's still negative 1. Which means that if you're solving equations, then you need to consider both plus minus values of complex numbers as well. Now in this case, I take the square root first, giving me x minus 1 is root 5 plus minus, or x is 1 plus minus root 5. Now this is important because this tells me that if I have something squared equals a number, I can solve for x pretty easily. That's the motivation behind this next idea, which is called completing the square, which is an important tool in mathematics. The idea is if we can turn an equation into something squared equals something else, which is preferably a number, meaning there's no x terms here, it's easy to solve for it. Now we have seen in the previous example tool used is the fact that a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. The left hand side is what is called a perfect square, meaning it's a square of one expression. Let's learn how to do this using intuition. Example, I'm working with x squared plus 8x and my end goal is to write it as something squared plus some other things which are preferably a number. How? Let's look at some patterns. What is x plus 1 squared? It's x squared plus 1 plus 2x. x plus 2 whole squared is 4x plus 4. 3 whole squared is 6x plus 9 and 4 whole squared is 8x plus 16. Now when I compare this with x squared plus 8x, it looks like our end goal should be x plus 4 whole squared. And notice this relation. 4 is 2 times, or sorry, 8 is 2 times 4. 6 is 2 times 3, etc. So how do we get from x squared plus 8x to x squared plus 4 whole squared plus other stuff? I compare them and I see what is missing. 
what's missing is 16. So I add and subtract. This amounts to adding zero, which changes nothing. Now the first three terms can be grouped together to form a whole square. So this expression now is written as x plus 4 squared minus 16, which is our goal. And the observation is 8. If we are working with 8x, then this number in here is half of that, which is 4. Now the procedural method. If you have x squared plus bx as a binomial, you add and subtract b divided by 2 whole squared to get the form of something squared plus other stuff. Check. x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 whole squared. This is the identity of x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. Verify that this actually is x squared plus bx. This process is called completing the square. Let's see here. I hear b is negative 7. So I add negative 7 over 2 squared and I subtract negative 7 over 2 squared. Now I know by identity this is going to become x plus b over 2 which in this case is negative 7 halves squared minus this is 49 over 4. Here b is 3 halves so b over 2 is going to be 3 half times 1 half which is 3 over 10. So I can add and subtract 3 over 10 whole squared. This gives me x plus 3 over 10 squared minus 9 over 100. Now another observation, whenever you have a plus here, this is going to be a plus. Whenever you have a negative here, it's going to be negative. And that's because of the way the expansion for a plus b whole squared and a minus b whole squared works. Okay, the last one is area method. Now what's x squared plus 4x? x squared plus 4x means I have a square with sides x and x and then I have four rectangles with sides x and 1. Now I want to stack them so that I get a square. So one way to go about it is I start with the x by x block. Now there's four of them so I distribute them two equally horizontally and vertically. Right? But I can't make a square because this is missing. So what I can do is I add these missing things. And if you count what I'm missing, I'm missing exactly four, an area of four, because that's one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. And then I subtract these four blocks. Now this entire thing is a square. And what's the area of this square? It's the side, which is x plus two, minus 4. So those are the three ways in which you can think about completion of square. Again the motivation is that if we are solving for x then it's easier if we get a whole square because we can find the values of x in terms of the radicals by taking the square root. Okay now let's look at some more trinomial stuff. Recall that we learned factoring and then we also learned that factoring helps us solve equations, find values of x for which certain trinomials become zero and that's how it works. And then we also looked at cases where it could not split the middle term, right? For example, x squared plus x plus one, which means you're finding two numbers with sum one and product one. And that's really not possible because the only way to get a product one um, using whole numbers is one and one and one plus one is two. So how about equations like this? How to solve them? That's our goal, is to develop a method to solve any trinomial, even the ones that cannot be factored directly. So the tool of, again is completion of square that we just learned. Now here's an example. So first step is going to be complete the square. Okay, now b is negative 6. So x squared minus 6x, b over 2 is negative 3. So I add b over 2 squared, but I also, sorry, need to subtract that and I still have the plus 4. Now the first three terms become x minus 3 squared. This is minus 9 plus 4 equals 0. 
that gives me x minus 3 squared minus 5 equals 0. And now I can solve pretty easily because x minus 3 squared is 5. I take the square root, gives me x minus 3 is plus minus root 5, eventually yielding x is 3 plus minus root 5. What this says is, this says x equals 3 plus root 5 or 3 minus root 5. So instead of writing it this way, we can also write it using the plus and minus sign. Let's look at a second example. This is slightly different because I have this 2 here. But I have an advantage here of this whole thing being equal to 0, which means I can divide both sides by 2. When I divide both sides by 2, now this looks similar to what I had before. And here b is just negative half, which means b over 2 is negative quarter. So what I need to add and subtract here is negative 1 over 4 squared and then subtract that. After you do that, don't forget the 3. There's still the 3. Again, the first three terms, um, they combine to form x minus 1 over 4 squared. You have subtract negative 16 plus 3 equals 0. Continuing, that's x minus 1 fourth squared becomes um, 1 over 16 minus 3, which is, if you take the LCM, will give you negative 47. So x minus 1 fourth is square root of negative 47 over 16 plus minus, which means x is 1 fourth plus minus, I can use i, and the square root of the real part. Again, these are two solutions that are possible. So this is one way in which you can solve any given trinomial. In the next video, we're going to look at um, a way to develop a formula so that we don't have to complete the square each and every time.